For as long as digital audio has existed, audiophiles have been splintered. Disputes, feuds, arguments have arisen, battles lost and wars sieged, all over whether digital could replicate analog, let alone replace it. Things have come a long way since digital began, though. Why? Because of the evolution of the DAC. The term DAC gets thrown around often when it comes to digital audio. But what is it? Why do you need one? Where does it fit in your system? These are all great questions and we're going to answer them and more in this video. I'm Josh. Let's get cooking. DAC stands for Digital to Analog Converter. A DAC transcribes the ones and zeros of a digital string of data into a smoother sine wave. Nearly every digital device that plays music already has some sort of DAC in it. Your phone, tablet, computer, all of these have DACs built in. But not all DACs are created equal. Many are built for internal use in a device, but there are plenty meant to be external for things like phones, transports, computers, streamers, you name it. So how does a DAC fit into your signal chain? As you can see, we have a CD transport, a preamp, an amplifier, and speakers, and speaker, a mostly finished setup. The only thing that's missing is a way to transcribe the digital waves from the CD transport into analog ones, because that's all of the preamp, amplifier, speakers, that's all that it can read. And that's where the DAC comes in. It simply goes between your digital source and your analog amplification. All things considered, your DAC success is determined by two things, audio resolution and file type. Put simply, your resolution is how fast and efficiently the audio data can be read. This is measured through bit depth and sample rate. So for example, a 16-bit by 44.1 kilohertz resolution is considered relatively low quality, while a 32-bit by 192 kilohertz resolution is very high quality. You don't always need the highest resolution for your DAC to do the job, but it can certainly help. File type, on the other hand, measures how much data is retained or lost through compression. File types are labeled as lossy, lossless, and uncompressed. While DACs are very useful machines and imperative for digital audio, there are some associated problems. A common issue is noise. DACs can be sensitive to the noises produced by the hardware inside them. You ever listen to a CD player as it's playing and the machines inside are whirring and they're going <laughs> Well, that's all noise that a component makes trying to play your music. And that's what makes an external DAC so useful is that the more you can separate your components, the less noise a system as a whole is going to make, the less vibration it's causing, and the higher the fidelity will end up being. Another problem could be aliasing, but that has more to do with the file type quality rather than the DAC itself. Aliasing occurs when your DAC can't easily interpret the data, making some frequencies sound muddled. This is where doing your research and making sure you're getting the right DAC for your tastes and your listening habits comes in. It all boils down to what are you listening to and how. Do you play big WAV files off your CD player? Well, then get yourself a nice high-res external DAC. Are you playing a lot of FLAC files off your phone? Then check out something middle ground that's compact but still has a good bit depth. Are you mostly playing AAC files off your laptop speakers? Well, then maybe an external DAC isn't worth the investment right now. No matter what, it's important to do your homework and really understand how the DAC will help improve your system. Well, folks, the debate is over. While analog at one time reigned undeniably supreme, the strides modern technology has made has leveled the playing field. Going digital has never sounded better, all thanks to the DAC. If you have any DAC or other audio related questions, email us or give our sales staff a call. That's it for this video. Remember to like and subscribe and let us know what DAC's been working for you in the comments. I'm Josh and I'll see you next time.